there's nothing quite like the smell of sausages cooking. So viewer Simon quite enjoys sausages just like me, but he's concerned about them. He wants to know what's exactly in our sausages and if eating too much of it can cause, you know, things like cancer and other ailments. So in this episode of Talking Point, I'll do the investigating for you. Check out these sausages, maybe eat a bunch of them too. from chewing. The beef ones? Mm. No, I have you had those? No, I have not. Sarah Ao is a competitive food eater. So in the same amount of time, she cleaned out six large sausages to my two and a half. I'm done. Those are good sausages, man. I think you did a really good job. But you're the real winner. Oh. I mean winner. <laughs> <laughs> Stuffing ourselves with sausages isn't the main reason why Sarah and I are meeting today. An avid sausage lover, she's going to show me how sausage varieties have grown over the years. You definitely have to try this one over here. It's the organic beef, bacon, onion and tomato sausage. Okay. I just recently found out about these and they taste like a like, bolognese kind of flavour. Oh, wow, like yes. pasta in right, a casing. That's okay. exactly right. And I'm not sure if they have them here, but they have like the German Weisswurst. I really want to try some of the new flavours that sure. they have. Let's go with the chicken madras curry chicken sausage. Madras, yeah. And okay. let's have the Italian sausage here. Thank wow, you. Okay. Yeah, those are pretty good. Yeah. Do you think oh. there's been an increase in demand for sausages in Singapore? Oh. Definitely. When I do go supermarket shopping, there's like a whole range of like new flavours. You know, you get to have so much options. And the only reason why, probably because there are more people eating sausages. Uh, why do you think that's the case? Sausages are just convenient and very easy to cook kind of snacks. So you're saying the supply has increased also because the demand has increased? Exactly, yes. It's not just in supermarkets yeah. that you see like a rise in varieties of sausages. They actually do have now like independent kind of like butcheries opening yeah. up. Yeah, you've seen like even those small scale ones, artisanal right. sausages. And they make their own sausages too, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, okay. With so many different types of sausages out there, I wonder if people know what's in them. Do you know what is inside your sausage? I don't know. Which part of the cow is used to make the sausage? Uh, okay. okay. What's your favourite sausage? Chicken. Chicken. Well, which part of the chicken is in the sausage? I don't know. I also don't know. Never mind. Okay. This I know is like a blend of many parts. Uh, you think the whole thing? Maybe the head also. The stickers are everywhere. Most people don't know exactly which part of the animal makes it into the sausage. I'm taking these guesses to Sean Francis, a butcher of 20 years. Hey Sean, how are you? Come out back. Okay, great. Sean, so I went out and asked random people about what they think are in our sausages. For pork, they think everything from the ears to the hoofs, the tail. That's right. Okay. We had the chicken, you know, right down to the head. Chicken <laughs> yeah. feet. A bit of tail in there. A as bit well. of tail in there yeah. as well. <laughs> and for beef, yeah. they have rubbed the rounds, even some of the, the legs as well. What's going on with this guy? And the head, I don't. <laughs> How accurate are these people in terms of what they think are in our sausages? Uh, they're definitely uh, a lot more accurate with the cow here. Okay. Um, with the chicken and the pig, there's a Definitely a bit of creativity there. So, no tail? No tail. <laughs> no tail, no feet, no ears? No, no, no. No, no inside, what no. about the organs? Some people think it's all mashed up, right? Because no, I... I mean, in some products there definitely is, but the only insides of a pig that's in our sausages are the pig casing. That's a pig's intestine. All natural sausages are made out of intestines. You've got a variety of meats here? Yeah, sure. I've actually prepared a few cuts here for you okay. to look at. Um, so we'll start with the beef. Um, this cut here is the chuck. 
on the top of your chart there. Okay. It's a great cut for sausages because of the fat to lean ratio. This one here, just from looking at it, I can tell that this is around about 70-30. Which is kind of the, the leanest that we want. It weights up the fat. Yeah, right? that's all the fat. All right, the pork. All right. So, snout, ear. You wouldn't get too much meat out of these cuts for sausages. Things like a jowl and a cheek would be way too fatty. What we have here is our shoulder and back fat. The reason we use back fat is because fat from this part of the peak here has got a, a lower melting point. So it'll actually keep it juicy. That can be the difference between using oh. back fat versus the fat from the, uh, from the hand or the leg here. You can feel that the back fat is hard. The texture will uh, stay together and it will actually hold inside the sausage. Right. Yeah, whereas the uh, fat from the leg is a bit more uh, softer and a bit thicker and it will melt a lot faster when you're, uh, when you're cooking a sausage and it all comes out okay. and then you end up with a dry sausage. Let's go to our chicken. Um, there's definitely uh, a lot of misconceptions there about what goes into okay. chicken sausages, especially here. I can see a few feet. Not in the okay. sausage, yeah. Most people at home don't know the way around a chicken. Mm. Let me just get that out of the way. This here is our uh, thigh. Mm -hmm. And what we would do is we would bone this out completely. Right. And we would use the whole piece of the thigh with the skin on. That mm -hmm. adds to the fat. Uh, this here would be around about enough for one and a half sausage. So in general, a good sausage would have 70% lean meat, 30% fat. Yep, that's, that's, uh, that's what I believe. That would be the same whether it's chicken, pork, beef, sausage? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, we make our lamb ones a little bit leaner than that. Sean has an order to fill for some pork sausages, so I'm helping him with it. We're going to put all this meat, we're going to push it down the hole and it will get minced. All Sean adds to the pork is seasoning, such as salt, white pepper and rice flour. These sausages have about 90% of pork shoulder and back fat, and 10% of seasoning and water. Water binds the ingredients together. It also helps the meat suspend the fat so you don't end up with a dry and crumbly sausage. But this 90 to 10 ratio is not the case for all sausages. Some of those types of sausage that you would get pre-cooked in a, mm -hmm. maybe a supermarket style. Some of those could have some breadcrumbs, maybe a bit more flour. And then when you put those products in there, you can also add more water because the flour uh, and the breadcrumbs sucks up more the water, water. water. And that's where you get the weight and that's how you get more money. Right, <laughs> so it, it's just as heavy a sausage, but yeah. it's got less meat. Yeah. Chuck it in. Now we get to use our hog casing. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on the nozzle. So what we're going to do Ooh, there you go. is just oh, go like that. Wow, that was quick. Yeah. It's time for another talking point test. And my sausage of choice... Chicken. 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 That's right. Chicken. Incidentally, it has seen a growth in demand recently, according to supermarket chain DFI Retail Group. I've picked 10 chicken sausages. More processed versions you can find at supermarkets that are frozen, chilled or canned. As well as freshly made ones without added chemical preservatives. They range between 40 cents and 4 Singapore dollars for 100 grams. I want to know just how much meat there really is in these sausages. Most of us are familiar with these more processed chicken sausages that we see in the frozen and chilled section of the supermarket. 100 grams of this fan favourite is about 90 cents, whilst 100 grams of this more upmarket smoked version comes in at $2.70. That's triple the price. But price notwithstanding, if you look at the ingredient labels, they both contain sodium nitrite, which on the more premium brand is listed as E250. Sodium nitrite is one of the main reasons why sausages get a bad reputation. But what exactly is it? So this is the one that they use usually. For making sausages and cured meat. It's a preservative but also gives you the colour and also the flavour. Sodium nitrite prevents the growth of 
food poisoning mm -hmm. bacteria and okay. the most well known is the Clostridium botulinum which causes botulism. So that's very like food poisoning, that correct. gives us a really bad tummy ache. Correct, and sodium nitrite is very effective against it. The issue is not so much about sodium nitrite, mm -hmm. it's actually about the reaction that sodium nitrite have with the meat. They can form N-nitrosyl compounds. The most common is the N-nitrosamines. So the N-nitrosamines are a class of compounds that has been classified as carcinogens by the WHO. And carcinogens are no good for us because they can lead to... Yep, cancer. And then the most common cancer associated with processed meat uh, would be the colorectal cancer. So there will be three ways in which N-nitrosamines can form. When you have sodium nitrite added to the meat, so the meat will naturally contain some amino acids and so the nitrite can react with the amino acids to form the cancer-causing uh, N-nitrosamines. Okay. But that reaction uh, is much, much lesser uh, because the environment in just meat alone is mm. not favourable for the formation. But when we are cooking it at high heat, then uh, the nitrite can also further react with the amino acids that's present inside the uh, meat, then uh, you get a lot more of the N-nitrosamines uh, being formed. And then the third condition, the nitrites, when it reach the stomach, because the stomach is more acidic, the nitrites can actually be more uh, reactive and will start to react with the amino acids that's present. Right. And then it can form even more N-nitrosamines. N-nitrosamines, which yes. are cancer-causing? Correct. So from the curing stage to the cooking stage and then the eating stage is actually a whole compounding effect of nitrosamines. Why is sodium nitrite still being used so much? There are many other ways in which we can preserve food nowadays. So we can keep the meat chilled or mm. keep it frozen. So the benefits of using nitrites as preservative is a, a little less prominent nowadays compared to in our ancestors' time. But if you want to achieve the pink colour mm. and the flavour of cured meat, that there really is no other oh. alternatives. There are other alternatives that tries to give it the colour, but it will still not be able to give you the flavour of a cured meat. Nitrite added to cured meat is mm -hmm. actually very highly regulated. So in Singapore, uh, the regulation is 125 milligram or 0 0.125 gram per kg of meat. So it's actually very low level. Okay. Uh, and highly regulated. As much as it is a form of preservation, sodium nitrite is also added to give sausages the distinctive taste we are all so familiar with. The amount of nitrites in our processed meats is tightly regulated here, but... According to the International Agency for Research on Cancer, if you eat 50 grams of processed meat daily, so that's about one and a half of these sausages, and can contain up to 6.25 milligrams of sodium nitrite in Singapore. Your risk of colorectal cancer increases by 18%. So that actually means you are 1.18 times more likely to get colorectal cancer if you eat this amount of processed meat per day, compared to those who eat none. There might be a solution. Singapore's first company that mass produces sausages without nitrites and I've been given access to how it's made. So first, we've got to go through the food bath. Don't bring in any things that we don't want to bring in. So this is uh, pure fresh pork leg. No uh, funny parts, uh, no uh, off cuts, skin okay. and all that. Sausages here are made with pork leg, instead of the shoulder, the cut of choice when I was at the butcher's earlier. The reason why we use pork leg is because it has got a very good water binding capacity so it ends up in a much juicier product. Particularly for smoked and uh, cooked sausages, they go through one round of cooking so you want it to remain juicy after the consumer reheats it. I'll give so it a try. Just use your knee and activate. Just guide them out. I'm yeah, just... yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay, stop. Uh -oh. Ah, Alright. Okay, what happened here? <laughs> Snap. It's snap. Oh, it's snap. Yeah, not it's not my snap. fault, right? Yeah, not your fault. Oh. <laughs> it happens, it happens. <laughs> Sausages here are cooked and smoked before being packaged. 
Ooh. One batch of fresh sausages. Mmm, I can smell that. So these are cooked, right? That's right, they are cooked. So after cooking and smoking, they will be able to, to be kept in the chiller for about a month. Only one month? Only one month. Good. All right. So now this is the final product after it's been smoked. So actually, after we pack them in the vacuum bags, we will send them off for high pressure processing at a facility nearby. So high pressure processing is a form of pasteurization. Right. So we are trying to inactivate or kill off any microbes that are inside so that we can extend the shelf life for even longer. And then it comes back with two months shelf life. It's a form of pasteurization that does not involve heat or chemical additives. So the products go through about 6,000 bar of pressure. To give you an idea, your car tires, they are yeah. inflated to about 3 bar. Okay. So that's like 2,000 tires worth of pressure. So why then aren't more companies just not using sodium nitrite and using these machines? Well, sodium nitrite is a lot cheaper, a lot more convenient. Right. You don't have to send it off somewhere, get it back again. So that is an extra step, extra logistics involved. Okay, so um, most companies would use this yeah, as right. a preservative. That's right. We avoid them because we want to uh, produce a clean label product. Okay. But then nitrite has got a certain flavour and so we had to try to mimic the familiar flavour by using uh, fresh spices. It took us a while to get the balance correct because when people talk about sausages, that familiar flavour is very important. To give their sausages the familiar cured flavour, a blend of over five different types of herbs and spices is used. Okay, let's do the taste test. Alright, looks pretty good. Hmm, juicy, moist, you know, it's got the familiar mm. taste of a sausage. And I like the smoked bit. Mm. So instead of using sodium nitrite to preserve its sausages, Jill Sausages uses a high pressure process to extend its shelf life. 100 grams of these sausages cost about $3.30. That's almost eight times more expensive than other cheaper versions at the supermarket. But this price point is comparable to other premium sausages that have sodium nitrite. Earlier, I'd send chicken sausages for testing. I want to know how much of my sausage is really meat. Four weeks later, my lab results are in. The 10 types of chicken sausages I sent for testing cost between 40 cents and 4 Singapore dollars for 100 grams. Which option would contain a higher ratio of meat? These are 10 sausages that you brought in. I have arranged from the lowest meat content to the highest meat content. Well, the first one we have 34% and then follows by 51%. 51. So it takes a leap from 30 to 50 already. Okay. And then 60, 70. and the highest one, we have 85%. Wow, 34 to 85, that's almost a 50% difference. Yes. If it's about 30% meat, what is the other 70% made up of? The sausage is normally made out of two things. The actual meat, the meat content, and the rest will be fillers. Things like starch, and then followed by soy proteins, and then okay. food additives, flavouring, colourings, and also water. The sausage samples were broken up for testing. The sausage with the lowest meat content looks less like actual meat compared to the sausage with the highest meat content. That's due to the presence of fillers. Fillers are typically starches from rice, bread or rusk. They absorb water to bulk up the sausage and add to its weight. Normally those manufacturers they never put how much chicken content they put in. Okay, so even though it says pork, chicken right at the top, we don't know actually what percentage. Yes, we don't know. When it comes to price, is it then fair to say that the more expensive the sausage, the more meat it would have? Yes, so out of these 10, these three are the most expensive and it ranges from 75% to 85% of meat content. My test proves that the more expensive the sausage, the more the meat content. Which leaves me one last thing to investigate. 
is sodium nitrite all that I need to think about when it comes to eating sausages? I've asked Dr. Grace Tan to join me. Oh, hey, Doc, you're just in time. I've prepared breakfast, lunch, brunch. Oh, these look delicious. <laughs> so when it comes to comparing the sausages, are the fresh ones better than the processed ones? I would say that the fresh ones are better because the processed sausages tend to have more additives, preservatives and salt. And sodium nitrite, whereas the fresh ones, there's more meat and less um, preservatives in it. But there is still salt, fat in it, which also leads to other kinds of health problems. So there's an average of between 500 milligrams to 1,500 milligrams of salt in each process and slightly fresher sausage. And the recommendation actually for every person is about 1,500 milligrams to 2.5 grams of salt a day. So really, if you just take two sausages a day, that's really your salt intake. You hit your, hit your limit, right? Yeah. When you have a large amount of salt in your body, you tend to retain water and that results in increased blood pressure right. and you then get um, damages to your arteries and your blood vessels, okay. which then lead to more More issues. complications, it sounds like it. So I usually tell my patients that if you really wanted to eat a sausage, for example, you know, it's not that you, you can't eat it or you shouldn't eat right. it, but I would say go to a butcher that you trust okay. that makes the you know, a sausage in a, in a way that it doesn't involve too much preservatives or additives. Eat good meat in that sense. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to cooking sausages, then is one way better than another? There are some health groups that advise poking holes in a sausage. That allows some of the fat to drain out. All right, so you can see some... Ah, I can see some of that oozing out. But at the same time, that's what makes a sausage, right? It's That's the, the good, tasty, juicy bit. Oh, look at that fat. Yeah, so you're potentially reducing the fat in that sausage. Yeah, which maybe doesn't make it taste as good, but... Okay. Um, Making yeah. it a little bit better. Just a little bit. So I've kept these sausages in the fridge for about two months now and I think they're still good to eat. So there are options for consumers now when it comes to the more processed sausages they can keep. So personally, I love all kinds of sausages, from the kind we get at the butchers to the more processed versions at supermarkets. But you know what? Having worked on this episode of Talking Point, I think I'm going to limit my sausage intake to just once a month. After all, having too much salt in my diet is never a good thing. <laughs>